Hello, good afternoon. Sage here reporting live from Calgine Studio. And it's lunchtime here in Sydney. Time for the Mid-Market Pulse. In today's show, we're going to look over the Australian share market performance by the mid-session trade and explore the various stocks. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. And the Australian shares opened lower today and extended the loss by the mid-session as investors gave the thumbs down to the September quarter GDP numbers. The detection of a first confirmed community case of the Omicron COVID-19 variant in the country also triggered a sell-off in the market as it stoked fears of a re-imposition of curbs and a delay in economic recovery. Investors also reacted negatively to vaccine maker Moderna's chief executive officer's comments that coronavirus vaccines are likely to be less effective against the new variant. And snapping the previous session gains, the ASX 200 index was down by 64.40 points or 0.89% by the mid-session trade. The benchmark index opened lower today, mirroring a weak closing at the Wall Street along with falls in oil, gold and iron ore as investors repositioned for a faster taper by the US Central Bank. In the overnight trade, the US market closed lower amid concerns about the COVID-19 Omicron variant's impact on the global economy and the looming fears about a reduction in coronavirus stimulus also injected negatively in the market. The Dow Jones Index and the S&P 500 ended 1.9% lower each and the Nasdaq Composite fell 1.6%. And the US Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said on Tuesday that the risk of higher inflation had increased and the US Central Bank is considering winding down bond purchases earlier than forecast. So in his testimony before the Senate Banking Committee, Powell said the US Central Bank could revisit its plan to scale back bond purchases because of a strong economy and surging inflation. And back home, the Australian economy contracted by 1.9% during the September quarter as the Delta outbreak disrupted economic recovery, putting half the population under lockdown during most of the period. The contraction in GDP was lesser than the economists' expectations of a 2.7% contraction. And on an annualised basis, the economy grew by 3.9% higher than the analysts' expectations of 3% growth. And meanwhile, on the sectoral front, all 11 sectors slipped in the negative terrain. And the consumer staples and utilities sectors were the worst performers, with each falling more than 2%. A-REITs, tech, energy, telecom, financials, consumers, discretionary and industrials also witnessed a surge in selling, dropping over 1%. In the next segment, let's focus on the top gainers and losers by the mid-session trade, beginning with the worst performing stock on the ASX pack, automobile component manufacturer GUD, which fell nearly 7% by the mid-session. And some of the other notable losers were the gold producer Chalice Mining, healthcare business ProMedicus, industrial explosives and chemical supplier Insatec Pivot, and the global online marketplace Redbubble. On the gaining side, Mineral Explorer South 32 topped the chart by rising 2.5%. And some of the other top gainers were oil producer Oil Search, food and staples retailer Grain Corp, and resource companies iLuca Resources and Linus Rare Earths. And now before we move to the newsmakers, let's take a small break. Tune in to stay updated while on the move. We will tell you where the crypto craze has reached. Where the property market is headed next. What the world is doing to become more environmentally friendly. Apart from tracking the daily market charter. Be on top of the latest news and announcements with Calkine TV. Welcome back, Sage here. Let's move on now to the stocks that created a buzz on the ASX today. And shares of Australian and New Zealand banking group fell as much as 0.9% by the afternoon as it faces a class action from law firm Fee Finney MacDonald. The class action is said to cover certain credit card holders in the period from 1st July 2010 right through to 1st January 2019, alleging that the bank's credit card contracts violated the Australian Securities and Investments Commission Act. ANZ Bank said it will review the claim and will provide any updates as required. Charter Hall Retail REITs shares climbed 1.5%. 
after the property investment firm acquired Ampol's portfolio and upgraded its earnings guidance. The company has acquired a 49% interest in a portfolio of 20 Ampol fuel and convenience retail centres for 50.5 million Australian dollars. The remaining 51% interest will be retained by Ampol. The deal will be funded by existing debt facilities and is expected to leave pro forma gearing at 34%. The company has also upgraded its guidance, expecting financial year 22's earnings per unit to finish at the top of its prior guidance range. And the full year dividends are expected to be no less than 24.3 cents per unit. The crisis hit casino operator Crown Resorts shares, traded marginally lower following appointment of Dr Ziggy Switzkowski as its new chairman. And Switzkowski replaces interim chairwoman Jane Halton, who held the role of interim chairman since 26 August 2021. Will remain as an independent non-executive director of Crown. And the appointment of Switzkowski as an independent non-executive director of Crown has become effective following the receipt of all necessary regulatory approvals. And shares of Australian ethical investments dropped nearly 4% despite raising earnings guidance. The wealth management company expects net profit over the six months to December 31st, 2021 to be up 8%. The company said funds under management rose 9% as on October 31st, 2021. And the metal detector and wireless communications business Kodan saw its shares falling over 2% after it announced acquisitions of the UK-based company Broadcast Wireless Systems. The company's subsidiary Domo Tactical Communications has acquired 100% of the shares of BWS from its founders. And the transaction is funded by Kodan's existing debt facility. And thank you for your company on that report, but that's all for now on the Mid Market Pulse. Stay tuned to Calcine TV as we have many more shows lined up for you for sharing live updates across the economy, markets and sectors. Sage signing off.